Hey, greetings friends. Welcome back to my game room again. This is uh, David McCord, your old pal here at uh, New Venture Games. And uh, we've been working diligently now on our latest Kickstarter campaign, which resulted in the production of five games from ancient Egypt. And this is the one I'm going to talk about today. This is called Aseb. This is one of those games that dates back uh, 5,000 years or more. It is speculated by most archaeologists that this game came to Egypt from further east, that it uh, bears a lot of similarities to uh, ancient Sumerian games, particularly the game of Ur, uh, which I have uh, already outlined in another one of my videos, and so you can tune into that video to uh, learn a little bit more about the game of Ur. Throughout that archaeological journey, um, the uh, game has been known as the Game of 20 Squares and several other names as well. Various examples of the game have been found all around that area uh, in Crete and Cyprus, as far southeast as Sudan, uh, Egypt of course, in eastern Persia. Uh, David Parlett, who was the author of the Oxford uh, Book of Games, um, speculates that the game may actually have originated in India and follow the trade routes to the west. Aseb was first documented in detail uh, from Egypt uh, after the discovery of a tomb in uh, Beni Hassan wherein there was a uh, inscription on the wall, two characters playing the game and a really short description of uh, what they were doing and in that caption uh, it used the word Isib or Aseb Egyptian linguists say that that is not a native Egyptian word, and uh, that kind of lends a little bit more credence to the idea that it was an import. Some historians have said that the game is called Jao. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, T-J-A-U. They say that that is an Egyptian slang word uh, akin to what we might say, bingo, you know, or I've got it, uh, that kind of a thing. As with most things Egyptian, the boards that have been found quite often are inscribed with hieroglyphs and particularly these two, uh, the Ankh, which everybody's pretty familiar with, that uh, stands for the afterlife, and the Nefer symbol, which uh, stands for goodness and uh, also has a lot of other connotations to it as well. Now I think it's rather astounding that this game lasted in Egypt for well over a thousand years at the time. And uh, according to the archaeology, it uh, resurfaces now and again through the ages. There have been discovered a series of boards for the 20 Squares game that represent animals and people. And uh, particularly, uh, you can see here there's a bird with spaces on the wings. Um, a scorpion is apparently a popular motif. And uh, these were discovered in illegal dig, actually, in Iran uh, at a site called Giroft. And so these are quite often referred to as the Giroft game boards. Now, a couple of uh, cuneiform uh, tablets have been found that describe the rules to a certain extent. There have been a couple of different, what you might call, popular versions of how to play a game. Uh, that you find what we did when we created this one. We uh, actually included two different versions of the game in here and uh, I'll be showing you the way to play for both of those. So without further ado, why don't we uh, jump right into the rules here and uh, we'll introduce you to version one. This version of the ancient game of Aseb is played with two four-sided dice tossed together on each turn. The game originally used astragals, knuckle bones from sheep and oxen. Four-sided dice are easier to come by these days. The white die will determine the distance of a peg's movement. One, two, three, or four, as you would expect. If an even number is rolled on the black die, the results on the white die are increased by four. Each player receives a set of five pegs, which start in the off-board row of holes, as shown. These are not actual spaces on the path of the game and are not counted in peg movement. They're simply a place to keep the pegs that are not in play. Pegs will be moved along the pattern of spaces as shown here. Both players will share the central pathway. Unlike many similar games, pegs can be entered onto the path on any die roll. 
the first space being counted as one from the die result. Pegs can only move in one direction, towards the goal. The objective is to move all five of one's pegs from the start position and off the board at the end. This does not need to be by exact count. The first to do so wins the game. If a player's peg would land on a space already occupied by one of their own pegs, that move cannot be made and another peg must be moved instead. If no such move is available, the turn is forfeited. The two outer corners contain symbols called nephroglyphs, which indicate goodness. If a player's peg ends its move on one of these corner spaces, the player gets another turn immediately. The new die result does not have to be used to move the same peg again, but can be applied to a different peg if desired. If a peg ends a move on a space occupied by an opponent's peg, the opponent's peg is returned to one of their off-board holes to be restarted on the path during a later turn. The exception is when that opponent's peg is on any of the spaces with an Ankh symbol. The Ankh glyph symbolizes the afterlife. These are considered safe spaces. The peg cannot be removed, so the move cannot be made. Now the second version of the game is very similar to the first one I just described. Uh, there are very subtle differences in some spots and more significant differences in others. And so it does play like a different game even though it's on the same board. And it's very possible that these two sets of rules existed in the past simultaneously in different regions. We just have to rely on the archaeological evidence, which, uh, as I say, is, is sketchy at best. So uh, give the second set of rules a look, and uh, obviously you can play it either way. Now in version two of the rules, a set of four stick dice are used to determine the movement. These are also called throwing sticks or casting sticks. The active player takes up the four sticks in their fist, holding them vertically a few inches off the playing surface. They open their hand to release the sticks. How these sticks land indicates the movement available for that turn. If only one stick is flat side up, the player can move one peg one space. As one would expect, two, three, or four sticks flat side up indicates a move of two, three, or four. If none of the sticks is flat side up, this is considered a result of five. Now, as in version one, pegs will be set up and moved along the pattern of spaces as shown in the illustration, sharing the central pathway. And again, pegs can be entered onto the path with any die result, the first space being count of one. Pegs can only move in one direction towards the goal. The objective, also as in version 1, is to move all five of one's pegs from the start position and off the board at the end. The first to do so wins the game. Pegs cannot pass pegs of their own color. If a move would take them onto or past the space occupied by their own peg, that move cannot be made and another peg must be moved instead. If no such move is available, the turn is forfeited. If a peg ends a move on a space occupied by an opponent's peg, the opponent's peg is returned to one of their off-board holes to be restarted on the path during a later turn. If a peg lands on any one of the five spaces containing a symbol, the player gets another turn immediately. The new turn does not have to be used to move the same peg again, but can be applied to a different peg if desired. Pegs can only be moved off the end of the path by exact count. That is, if a peg rests on the last space, a toss of the stick dice must result in only one stick flat side up to move off. If a peg rests on the next onk up the path, the result of five will allow the peg to move off the end of the path, unless that passes another one of that player's pegs. So the two versions have many similarities, but also many distinct differences. So that is the game of Aseb. Uh, this is number one in our set of five ancient Egyptian games available from uh, New Venture Games and uh, Red Hen Toys. Um, we'll also be having these in other retail outlets online and I hope you get a chance to uh, enjoy these and uh, get a copy for your own collection. 
Thanks again for tuning in. Really appreciate your support. And uh, be sure, if you haven't yet, subscribe. Hit the little notification bell there so that you can uh, be notified when we have a uh, new video uh, uploaded. Uh, as always, leave your comments and questions here in the comment section down here below. And I'll uh, be happy to uh, try to address those as soon as I can. If you have any suggestions as far as games you'd like to see detailed, uh, let me know that too. We still have four more games in this series to do uh, coming up in the uh, next few months. And uh, I'll be filling in in between with some other uh, historic and classic games and uh, review some of those for you. And uh, maybe even introduce some new stuff in the coming months as well. So stay tuned, and in the meantime, as I always say, be sure to play every day.